Hey, what is going on, Dr. Dave? Dr. Joe, it's been a while. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Uh, so we want to welcome our listeners and viewers back to another episode of the Journeys of Not So Ordinary People podcast. Uh, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're into a new season. Uh, we're already excited about what's coming up. But uh, thanks for tuning in again. So Dave, how you been doing, man? Most excellent, Joe. Most excellent. It's another beautiful day in the Southwest paradise and uh, loving the weather. <laughs> and uh loving what we do absolutely yeah me too i got a smile on my face you know get up in the morning ready to go and uh so i'm excited about being here all right so enough about the pleasantries and uh, (laughs) us wasting your time Um, but we want to uh, talk about a topic today Um, and so the topic is don't do it alone right don't Don't do it alone alone. is that what you said don't do it alone yeah, we don't want people to start to make assumptions about what we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Dave so he can get us started down the right path. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Don't do it alone. Um, I, yeah, I'm sure many of us have been told if we think back to our childhood, don't do that alone. Don't go do that by yourself. Always bring someone with you. Take yeah. someone with you. Right. You know, so. That's when you say don't do it alone. That's what I think about, you know, as a kid walking to the store or walking to school. Don't do that alone. Don't do that alone. Or, you know, if you're going to be doing something that's maybe potentially has some hazards to it, like, you know, stoking a a barbecue or a bonfire or something like that, you know, don't do it alone. Right. Yeah. Working with electricity and plumbing. Don't do it alone. So, (laughs) yeah, that's what comes to my mind. So, you know as I've carried that kind of thought through, through my life, it's, it, it touches on a lot of the topics we've touched on already throughout the last year. And now we could even say year plus technically. So, (laughs) (laughs) but, uh, you know, I think about, you know, how many times have I done things alone that worked well? And how many times have I done things alone that maybe would have worked better with some assistance or if I wouldn't have been alone, you know? And I think about a lot of the, the little projects i do around the house and my son comes over and helps me and i'm like well i did that and i'm like well i didn't really do it (laughs) alone i did it with some help you know even if it just handing you a tool or giving you a little bit of advice advice or a different perspective um even this past week my dad was here and we were playing with some little things in the garage and and just you know but i wasn't alone you know and he was there providing feedback and he came in and I said, yep, dad and I did this. And he goes, well, I didn't do it. You did it. I said, we did it. It was right. You know, absolutely. All I did was this, but it doesn't matter. You were there. Yeah. You provided the oversight, whether it was quality control or whatever you want to call it. Right. You know, <laughs> but it, what I wasn't doing it alone. So, you know, and, and I realized, you know, as we were talking about this topic um, for discussion today is almost there's almost nothing in my life that I haven't really truly done alone. There's been a handful of things, but most of the time, and I feel comfortable saying this, most of the time someone else was involved in one way, shape, form, or another at some point during that progress of whatever that thing was that I was doing. But very few things I can honestly say I've done alone, you know, completely by myself. So, um, when we bring this topic up, I think it's important for our viewers and listeners to understand that even when we do things alone, most of the time we're not doing things alone. So yeah. what does that really mean in the scope of things? If if we're not, if we can't do anything alone by ourselves, that means we, do, do we have to involve other people? And there's no real definitive answer for that. Sometimes we don't have a choice, but to do it alone. But at this point, you know, for us, the, the focus point is don't do it alone because right. not because You can't do it alone, but why do it alone when you can do it with someone else and have that support, have that, those, that different perspective. Maybe there's a a way to do things a little bit better or a little bit differently. That'll make whatever you're doing, your product or service, you know, uh, turn out better, you know, and that's, that's kind of the cool thing. You know, it gets back to synergy, you know, one plus one is not two. It's more than the sum of the parts. So, um, yeah, uh, a lot of the big projects I've been involved in, education, military service, some of the cool projects I've been on throughout my career, they weren't solo efforts. They were right. parts of teams. Other people were involved. And even when I was doing something, my piece of that, 
project or process, I still wasn't alone because I could reach out to my supervisor, peers, leaders, mentors, subordinates, colleagues, friends, family members for advice or feedback right, on how right. something's going. And we do this all the time, you know, hey, we'll develop something or create something or put something together. And Joe and I will bounce these things off of each other. We may have been, and I'll just use a hypothetical example, create a PowerPoint slide by ourselves because it doesn't right. take two people operating the mouse mm. folks a contrary to right. popular belief um you don't need to share the keyboard one person right. has one right. side the other person has the other but it does that that developing that one powerpoint slide in this example there is more than one person involved in that absolutely yeah and yeah. and we can pull that thread and that thread will turn into rope at, real quick because there's a lot more that goes into it than just one individual so right i'll, I'll pause there Okay. Yeah. And, and Dave, you bring up a very good point that, you know, most everything we do, we do have some input <clears throat> feedback from someone else. But, you know, like you say, we're even working on a PowerPoint presentation. You're, you're either going to complete, say, a slide or several slides. You're going to send them to somebody more than likely and say, hey, could you just take a look at this? Can you review this? Do you see anything that stands out or anything I miss? And again, you're doing the end product or the final product, but you've also incorporated somebody else with their opinion or, you know, mm -hmm. their suggestions. And so for, for a lot of years, I've really viewed, uh, you know, doing things myself, but, but the reality is, like you said, most everything you do, someone is there to help you. And, and for a good reason, uh, mm -hmm. like you say, different perspectives, things you hadn't thought of, or even safety, uh, yeah. concerns so she's a big one. right yeah you, you know you're out in the garage like you say and and you're out there by yourself uh you trip and fall you hit your head on on you know a corner and, and you're out past that's out. only happened twice joe i've only passed out <laughs> twice <laughs> so i mean uh you know that that is it could happen and but but again if you've got somebody there that you can eat uh, at least, like you say, even if they're only handing you tools or even just for conversation, yeah. at least they would be there for you. Um, but so when we think in terms of, you know, anything we accomplish, and, and so I really go back to my education, which I, in most cases I do, yeah. and it, the fact that, you know, I was able to earn my degree uh, it is a testament to my family and them assisting me and not that they were, and, and well, I, I'll take that back in some cases, especially <laughs> when I got into algebra two, uh -huh. you know, all three of my kids are, are pretty good at math. Uh, and so I would, but they're like, say, hey. dad, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I admit that they would show me how they learned how to do it. Because again, when I went back to school, it was many years after I, you know, done math classes so they they did assist me with that uh really closely uh but but at the same time not even them assisting me with actual problem or problem solving but them just being who they were uh, yeah. accepting that you know dad's in school uh, i remember my son when he was younger he'd say hey dad can you come play video games with me and I'd be like, well, I got to get this paper done. So him realizing you know, or recognizing, you know, dad doesn't have the time that he used to have. Um, I, I, I give him a lot of credit for, you know, not stomping off and saying, you never play with us. He, that, so all of my family, uh, again, when I even when I earned my doctorate, I said, hey, this is a, you know, a success for all of us. We all did this. We all were part of this because again, without their support, even absolutely, um, th that I would not been able to achieve what I did. You know, I could yeah. have had, you know, could have had a spouse that said, Hey, you spend too much time, you know, locked up in the room on the computer. Yeah. And, and, but she didn't, she even took, yeah. you know, even went as far as, you know, when, the, when she knew I was in deep into my coursework, she, you know, kind of divert the kids take them away sometimes they'd go you know have have a meal outside or go uh, to the mall or whatever back that was the mall back then but mm -hmm. i mean just take them somewhere else so that there wouldn't be any distractions so right so again even though i was doing the bulk of the work as far as the actual assignments and things like that my my family helped me tremendously yeah. so uh, again we think about how people how we're not really doing it alone. Th those are some examples of that where, again, people uh, yeah. not knowing or assisting you greatly 
um, just yeah. by them being supportive and, and understanding uh, that I wasn't going to have the freedom that we had prior to that. So I, I think that's very important too, that it's happening. It's occurring. Like you said, um, sometimes we just really don't tie those together that that's really helping me or it, it's really supporting me. So mm -hmm. I just want to kind of go down that path. Yeah. A little bit. And, and I think it's interesting. We put things in perspective in like a professional environment, <clears throat> you know, we, we have our jobs and that's my job, you know, and uh, American culture is typically individualistic. And, yeah. and when we talk about my job, my, my role, my, this, it's very, very focused on the self, on the individual itself. Right. But then we're, we're brought into all these teams if you well not if you will teams you know you're right. a part of a team you're part of a department you're part of an organization a company uh you know or a military equivalent thereof so it's you know we're, we're part of a team we work for a company you're working for a team you work for right. yourself you're working for a team right. because even though you're like well how can i work for a team when i'm when i have my own business and all i do is x you have clients they have right. expectations. That's part of your team. So they may not be there to tell you how to do something, but they will influence your product, your service, your design, your marketing, your delivery, whatever. Absolutely. So yep. um, it goes beyond um, the literal. It kind of goes into the abstract a little bit because, you know, we do have a job to do and we get paid for doing our portion of that. But that's, right. that's the that's the focus or that's the key element our part is, right and that part is part of a bigger picture part of a bigger piece to the puzzle <clears throat> and understanding that will help us understand that you know we're not in this alone we are part of a team and you, and and that's why we, we're titling this one don't do it alone because right. when you do that you put yourself in a box and isolate yourself and it's not to say you won't be doing that project by yourself or that part of the el that work element by yourself, but you are part of something bigger. It's just what does that bigger mean and what type of support do you have? And if you're not getting that support, then that's another piece of the discussion. And, and that's a good, very good point, Dave. I, I like the way you put that, that, you know, even though you have an assignment or you're hired to do a specific thing at your organization or at your job, the reality is that it fits a much larger uh, piece of that part, uh, you know, finished product or mm -hmm. project or whatever it is. And I think that's the part where I think people, you know, we separate ourselves or, or don't understand the impact that what we do has a impact on what everybody else does. And, yeah. and, and we, we had that kind of that discussion really before we started yeah. along a different, you know, we're down another path, but that's exactly what it we're does. Kind of it does tie to. in. Absolutely. It, yeah. That, that, you know, you, we think, like you said, we, we were assigned or hired for a specific job, specific title, but, but again, the reality is uh, it's an organization. So we fit that into that big picture somewhere on that board. Mm -hmm. And so to understand that impact will help you understand that you're not doing it alone because yeah. we, like we've said, like you said, and you shouldn't do it alone. No, exactly. That's where I was kind of going. If you're it, so narrowly focused and it gets back to the, the metaphor, the analogy that we've used a few times before, and that is, you know, the food in the kitchen is great, but the ship is, the ship is sinking. You're too hyper-focused on, or you're right, too narrowly right. focused on what you're doing without understanding the impacts. Because right, yeah. if you did, you'd realize maybe you should be bailing water instead of cooking, instead that, of, right, cooking exactly. that burger on the grill. Yep. So um, when we say don't do it alone, that's a very deliberate statement. Um, not necessarily focused on the deliberateness of a team effort, but the deliberateness of knowing that you shouldn't be doing it alone because you do, you are affecting other people or right. other departments. Yep. And we have to, no matter what our position is, step back and step up and look around to understand what's really going on. So when we say don't do it alone, it's not a derogatory or demeaning or an incompetence thing. It's a, you need to really pay attention and understand not only what you're doing, but what, how what you're doing is impacting other areas right. because it yep. might make your job easier but you might've just made someone else's job 10 Absolutely. times harder. Yep. And with a little bit of feedback and integration and involvement with them, 
you may come up, you should come up with a win-win. It may not be perfect for both sides, but at least it's not going to create additional work for other people. Absolutely. And, and that's what I always think about when, you know, when we're talking about forming teams and, and getting a team together to resolve this issue. That's one of the things that we really should consider is, do we have all the right people in the room? Do we have right. the subject matter experts for whatever we're trying to accomplish? And, and like you just said, so that we don't um, do double the work, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we do it ourselves or we, you know, attempt to do it ourselves and then find out, oh, I should have brought this in there. I should have thought about this. I didn't know about this. You end up doing a lot more work if oh, you yeah. go ahead and, and, and attempt to do it yourself. Uh, yeah, that I diversity have, of thought and absolutely. The diversity of thought is really critical because groupthink is, is one of the worst things that can happen right. in a group. You yeah. get you know, a team of five or 20 people that think exactly the same with the same yep. backgrounds, you, you there's a lot of opportunities much. that are going to be missed. <laughs> right. You'll get something done and it'll be great, but at the detriment, probably at the detriment to many other folks. Right. Yep. And, and that's, that's why I go back to again, you know, when we're thinking about forming our teams and, and getting input from other people, uh, mm -hmm. making sure that, like you say, that diversity of thought is going to be there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Like you just said it, uh, even if you look at it in, in terms of a sports team, if I've got mm -hmm. five point guards on a basketball team, right? Yep, great uh, analogy. They may all be able to pass extremely well to one another, but who's going to score? Who's going to yeah. rebound? Who's going to do, you know, do all these other things? Or, or imagine a football team with just a bunch of quarterbacks on the right. Field. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would, I mean that would be fun when you when I think about it and imagine it looks kind of funny to see you know <laughs> seven guys on the field all throwing footballs in random directions, right? No one there to, to catch nobody. them. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, so again, you know, we kind of jokingly threw that out there, but that's the reality. Yeah. If, if we you know don't select team members that are diverse from ourselves or team members that think like us and then we're going to be limited on the outcome or the output of whatever that is mm -hmm. and so uh again we go back to just really understanding and like i say a lot of people have difficulty with this understanding uh, where your piece fits in that big puzzle uh, like right. i said if you're part of an organization or a job or military whatever it is you understanding how what you do impacts those other pieces absolutely yeah that's that interconnection and i, I mean even and i think if that's we, a piece that's missing from a lot of teams well if you even look at it this way if again if you're looking at your small piece how that impacts so most um you know say puzzle pieces mm -hmm. they have more than one edge one mm -hmm. surface think about that when you place that puzzle piece in the middle of the of the board and all these other pieces that eventually touch that piece that that's a very yeah. similar to again you know a organization where you yeah. do this part and then other people do those parts and then we see once that puzzle is completely put together all the pieces that it took to to you know complete that project or yeah. that mission whatever it is yeah. so i think you know again if, if you understand that part of it that i'm not doing this alone it's not just me even though i may have come up with this particular piece of it or this part of the idea i'm still not doing it alone or should yeah. be thinking i'm doing it alone yep exactly yep and uh you know when we continue to pull that thread about don't doing it alone it Again, it doesn't have to do with anything. It's not a negative connotation. It's an awareness. Right. And, you know, we need to understand, like you said, with the with the puzzle analogy, you know, there's many pieces touching the one piece, whether right. it's directly or indirectly. Right. And you can almost correlate that to something like a domino. Even the last domino that fell was touching the first domino that fell indirectly because right. that's yeah. how it fell. Yeah. Because if the first domino wasn't pushed, the last one wouldn't fall. Right. Well, yeah. you can still push the first one. The last one might not fall, but hopefully if everything's set up <laughs> properly, right? All right. <laughs> Nothing more frustrating than putting up 10,422 dominoes and only having three fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or having all but three fall. <laughs> right, right, right. So no, that, that's, uh, yeah, again, that that's a really good way of looking at it too. Like you say, that, that first domino ultimately reaches that last domino. But like you say, if we did not do something correctly in the middle and it yeah. stops, then that person or that domino at the very end is left thinking, okay, so where do I go now? So yeah. again, and, and it, that, that's it provides an opportunity important. for us to understand that even though the piece may be the exact same shape, 
is right. it the correct piece to go there exactly and that gets yep. back to that don't do it alone oh, because well, think about this is it aligned properly so i go. got i have it set up there you go. but i slightly angle it the wrong direction and yeah. and now it it is no longer going to connect with the other pieces yeah. i mean again if we think about um, why it's important to understand where you stand if, if you are one of those dominoes is it going to align with the next part of it or the, yeah. the previous part i may be a standalone domino and the whole line is you know on, on one side and, and i'm six inches away i'll never fit in there or i'll yeah. never be able to interact with the others yeah. i know we're using dominoes and puzzle yeah. pieces but but i think the the visual I think it's a little easier to understand Again, sure, it, sure. that that connectivity that you should have yeah. or, or we should think that we should have uh, it is the part that we're really trying to, you know, get across the point yeah. we're trying to get across. And, and I think the other piece we're trying to get across is challenging our listeners and viewers to understand how what they do impacts or doesn't impact right. yep. the, all the other areas within the organization or company that they work in. And, you know, you might think, well, I'm just a security guard, but you just a security guard does affect a lot of things. How you process someone into the, into the area, um, right. how long does it take? You know, what are the credentials? What do you do if it doesn't work out? Or, you know, maybe you're a manager, you know, how does your team affect the other teams and finance right. and training and production and leadership? I mean, if we just get too focused on what we do without understanding the impacts we're going to do a lot of great things but it may be the detriment to other areas and then now they're forced to fix things it's right, and it's no right. different than reversing the perspective we're doing our job really well and we have all the right players there but then you know another department or two or team or two is doing something and it seems like no matter what they do it creates more work for us if they right, understood right. better what they're doing and how it impacts us negatively and positively, we can find a, a middle ground that'll work good for both sides. So it's not hurting someone else's team or creating more work for another Absolutely. area. And, and I think you touched on this earlier where, where you talked about awareness. I mean, that's really what it is, is again, taking time to, again, reflect on what I do, how it's going to impact the next organization or the next mm -hmm. group or or even in personal or the previous uh, group you know but, right how does all of you know being aware of how what i do is going to affect somebody else mm -hmm. that that's really what it's all about is that awareness piece and that reflection yeah. piece on okay now i'm aware of that so what do i need to do mm -hmm. and so that's why it, it, it goes back to kind of what they was just explaining that you you reach out to those different entities that that yeah. you might affect and that's why I say you're not doing it alone. You you yeah. are actually in, actively engaging with other people to to figure yeah. this out. And so, uh, you know, doing it alone, like I say, for a lot of years, I thought I was doing it alone. Uh, but but like they said, just the simplest of uh, you know somebody handing you tools, you, you learn very quickly. You're not doing it alone. You, you're you may be doing ninety ninety five percent of the work, but you have someone there to support you in some form of fashion and, and if yeah. we look at it in those terms we'll realize that there's very few things that we do alone um, yeah. you know so that's where we're trying to go with this and, and to help our viewers and listeners understand that um you know it's it's great to say at the end of it i, I accomplished this but if you really take a look at all the input feedback uh, you know interactions that you had have led to uh, the completion of whatever that project was or whatever it was. That's why I always, when, you know, I complete an assignment uh, and we're talking about the project being finished, I always go back and thank, uh, you know, as many yeah. people that I can remember. Absolutely. Instead of saying, yeah, I finished this and I'm done. You know, it, it's not, it's, there's no way I could have done most of those things by myself. It, it, mm -hmm. There's always going to be people that were critical for, uh, you your completion and so yeah. i i often try and do that to go back and 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 remember as many people as i can and to acknowledge that they assisted me uh, mm -hmm. because again a lot of people 
don't do that. And you can tell when, when somebody's done a lot of the work and then someone stands up and says, yeah, I finished this or I did this. And you can, you can just look at that individual that, you know, assisted them and, and they feel slighted yeah. or, you know, not um, garnish the respect that they, they should have got as, as being part of that uh, yeah. project or whatever it was. So, yeah. and again, you know, to Joe's point, um, you know, this isn't, a dig or or to take away from someone's skill set it's to help people it's to help our audience just think a little bit broader at whatever they're doing right. whether it's if they're an individual contributor whether they're a leader or a manager or executive understand how things come together and if your team doesn't understand how they fit into the bigger picture then help them understand you know and right. and if you and if you're on a team and you don't understand Seek that knowledge out. Go to your your supervisor, your leadership. Go to the other department managers or other peers or subordinates that you work with, and and learn these things. You know, understand how things work. You know, it's you know, it's like being a mechanic and understanding how an engine works. You know, and we've right. come up with many analogies in this in this particular episode. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we're not doing this alone. It's not to say you can't do it alone, but the the likelihood is you are not doing it alone and you need to understand that and and understand you know the bigger picture and that's that's i guess that's really what we're trying to say so we took the long scenic route um we could have said it in about three sentences but then it wouldn't really be a podcast so (laughs) it'd be be just more of a pod or a cast (laughs) all right dave well was there anything else that you wanted to leave our uh, viewers and listeners with um just understanding that, uh, you know, how you fit in, how other people affect you, how you affect them, either individually or collectively, personally or professionally or both, and and taking that time, those moments and opportunities to get to know who you're working with and what they bring and, you know, how you can help each other out and, and make your lives better personally and professionally. Uh, you know, you, you just stole a lot of my uh, <laughs> commentaries that I was going to use at the end here, but, but that's great uh, because we were thinking along the same lines. It, it really is about uh, awareness. We've said that a couple of times throughout the podcast, just that, uh, you know, understanding where you fit uh, in, in whatever picture um, or puzzle that, that you're actively in, uh, just figuring that out so that, again, you can have those good relationships with those entities close to you outside of that um, because again most things we do we don't do alone it's, yeah. it's uh, maybe we may think that or we we don't really look deep enough but the reality is we don't do many things alone so yeah. the more we can build those uh, relationships and and those interaction places and pieces that we can reach out to uh, the better off we're going to be uh, and get a lot more done too um, yeah, absolutely minds more input more perspectives mm-hmm. uh, more experiences and then being able to create something that that's ex- extraordinary uh yeah. versus just something that barely gets by absolutely so we we've uh, again covered this topic uh and then the bottom line is we just don't want you doing uh things alone uh, again yeah. for the most part you're really not so I, I think if you go into it with the focus of I'm going to get some assistance. I need some assistance. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Or like Dave said, it, it's not derogatory. It, it's just the reality. You, you get more accomplished with, with yeah. more, uh, you know, different and diversity of opinions, perspectives, all those things. Um, yeah. So with that, we just want to encourage you uh, to continue being your not so ordinary you. <laughs> <laughs>